Hello, it's Darren at Moonhair Studios here and today I'm looking at some functionality within Cubase which may be helpful and there are lots of YouTube videos out there on this but I am going to be using expression maps in some of my future videos and I thought it would be useful for you all to know what I'm talking about when, when I do that. Um, these will bring a lot of benefits to you if you're using different articulations in instruments and you want to be able to switch smoothly during your playback and mixes and there are benefits to CPU and RAM um, and I will be going into that in more detail in a future video but uh, have a look and see what you think. Right so I've got a uh, little chamber quartet set up here so we'll we'll just have a quick look at that without any articulation switching <laughs> So, not awful. In fact, it's quite difficult to make Spitfire chamber strings sound awful. Um, but it's not playing in the way that you'd expect real live players to play. I mean, spiccato all the way through, including on those um, fast runs. If you've got, you know, maybe 12 players all trying to keep together, um, there's inevitably going to be a bit of uh, sort of slurring um, and more of a staccato feel rather than spiccato. So... Normally what you do is you'd um, change articulations to get different types of sounds that you want during the, the piece to make it sound a bit more realistic. Now if you've got an absolutely mega computer like uh, say Christian Henson, it probably will have you know thousands of instances of contact open each with their own articulation in. Uh, but I've got a slightly more modest machine here running 16 gigs of RAM and it pretty soon starts to creak if you've got an awful lot of um, uh, different VST instruments open. So what I'm tending to do is switch between articulations. Now the, the chain strings comes with some um, you know good little setups. Um, if we just have a look at the instrument here, uh, we've got all the core sort of uh, articulations that you might want, pizzicato, calenio, um, tremolos, etc, etc. And the way you switch between those is to either play live uh, a note down here, or so like C minus two, um, you know, up, and that will switch your articulations as you play live. Or alternatively, what you would do normally is you'd go into the editor and you'd literally draw these articulation notes in down here so you'd, you'd just put them in for every articulation that you wanted to change to. I'm going to undo that because it will mess things up but it's really fiddly and often you can't actually see the notes that you're trying to uh, change. It, I just find it really horrible trying to draw these articulation changes in and this is where expression maps really come into their own. Right, so the first step is really just to make a note of all of your articulations and the key switch notes. You can either do that with, you know, pen and paper or refer to your actual instrument or the manual for the instrument. But one way or another, you need to be able to remember what all of these articulations are on the note that uh, you would be key switching from. We'll go up into the track inspector, look at expression maps and do the drop down and create a new expression map so it's the setup expression map setup and up here you can add a map and we're going to title it something useful Sable Q Sable Quartet um, that was the old name for Spitfire Chamber Strings easier to type right for every articulation you will need to add a sound slot so I know that there are nine articulations with um, Spitfire chamber strings. Right so now we're going to set up our key switches in this column. Um, then you can do this automatically by looking at the root note here and setting that to what you need. Well C minus two is actually the first articulation for chamber strings so that's fine we can leave it but if it was say C zero or something like that change that over and then set remote keys 
and it'll say chromatic. Um, you could just do white keys. Some some uh, key switches aren't chromatic, um, so the black keys are missed out. Click OK, and it'll insert all of your um, notes for you. So I just do this as a reminder, really. It's not the actual note that will trigger the articulation. Just bear that in mind. We'll go to that later on. So now under name, we'll type in the names of the articulations. So we'll, we'll head down the list. The first one is legato. Um, next one is longs. And I'll just carry on and you can join me later on after you've had a cup of tea. And last but not least, join me for Major Trill. Right, so they're all typed in. And now we need to add articulations to each of these slots. So we're going to click on column one, articulation one. There are some that are preset. They're mostly useful for classical players because it's uh, musical note notation. So um, if you're not a classical musician, you might just want to do what I do, add custom articulation, and you're actually just going to cut and paste the name that you put up here of your articulation into the text box down here. And we do that all the way along. Just add custom articulation and text. And I'm doing this with uh, control C and control V for those of you that want to know. And last but not least, yeah, trill. Okay. Now there's one last step and that's the output mapping. Uh, so for each of these slots, you will need the actual key switch that is going to trigger the change in the sound articulation. So you add output mapping, note on, and you're literally just now copying and pasting the notes across. So it's just repetition really. There's nothing particularly difficult about this. It's just a, a, a process, but it'll be worth it in the end, I can tell you. So that's all done. Now, I, I haven't quite worked out whether this is correct or not, but I always change these to direction um, just because I've found it the easiest workflow. Now it will mean nothing to you at this stage and there's certainly nothing wrong with using attribute. Um, so please don't bombard me with angry comments, um, but I just find my workflow works best with it like this. And I will explain that when we get to it. For now, let's just save this expression map. I've got my own folder for all of these, so we'll save it in there. And then we can close this down and we can add the expression map to this instrument by clicking here and selecting Sable Q, which we just created. And in fact, we can do that with all of these because they all use the same articulations. So we'll just add that into all of those instruments in the quartet. Right now we can start programming in the articulation. So let's just uh, look at the editor and gosh, that's a boring velocity map, isn't it? Um, what you need to do is click on the controller selection here. The drop down appears and articulations and dynamics are right at the top. And now you can see the value of this um, way of working because all of your articulations are actually written down here. You don't have to remember which note now applies to which key switch and try to paint it in. Um, you can just start with your pencil tool and literally just draw it in by clicking there. And that has actually drawn in spiccato for all of these notes. So if you were happy with that, that's all you'd have to do. Um, but I'm not happy with that. I want the runs to be a bit more leisurely, slightly slurred in comparison to the spiccato. So I'm going to put in some staccato sections there. And I'm just literally going to click along where I want spiccato or staccato. I will just draw them in. And it really is quite a fast process once you as long as you know you know roughly where you want to go with this 
um, you can draw them in really quickly and then we're obviously going to uh, finish on a, a long note there and that's it I've, I've programmed all of that in it's very intuitive you can easily see what you're doing there's another advantage to this method over key switches because with a key switch it literally is just one note there one note there etc if you've just played out your piece Cubase now thinks that your instrument is set to longs and it won't switch to anything else until it meets a key switch so if you start playing halfway through say this section here or at the beginning there um, and your key switch is over here it'll carry on playing long notes until it reaches the staccato key switch here with this system it knows that anything in this whole section must be played spiccato and this must be played staccato and it doesn't matter where you start your piece of music you'll get the correct articulation so there's there are advantages right so we'll have a quick listen to what that sounds like uh, soloed out that uh, violin one section and just take a look at the articulations as we go along it's set on long at the moment because that's the last note that got played um, but let's take it back to the left and see what happens so watch here and there you go all the key switches working perfectly now what happens if you don't have a an instrument that has a patch with multiple articulations in it and so you're going to have to add um, other instruments in to your contact instance so you don't want to go down the route of having separate contact um, instruments well you can do that as well so you know we've got a lot of different articulations here let's put in disco fours that might be a a bit extreme but it'll work as an example so now we've got two instruments in here effectively how do we key switch between the two of those in an expression map well let's go back to our sable Q expression map setup and let's add another slot and so this time what we're going to do is uh, we'll type in the description as we did before disco falls We'll add a custom articulation and use exactly the same method that we did before to cut and paste the text in here and attribute direction. Now, so what are we going to output map here? Um, well, we're not really interested in note data this time. What we want is channel data. We want to um, transmit on MIDI channel two. So if we click in here, just type in two. Now we're going to have to make sure that this note isn't a note that's within the range of the instrument, otherwise it'll sound as a note as soon as that key switch hits. So we'll put that in C minus two as well. And then that's well out of the way. Nothing will happen when, when that goes on. So that's fine. We will um, save that. then close this down and so if we go back into our instrument and right let's let's replace this with disco falls which you can see now disco falls is is one of our articulations so we'll in fact we'll we'll put it in say down here somewhere there we go right well this could sound utterly ghastly but let's let's give it a go and see whether it works uh, triggering a completely separate instrument <laughs> and there you go uh, probably not something I will I will leave in you know, that comment I said about making chamber strings sound awful I seem to have done it um, but that shows you that it's not just uh, key switches with notes that you can do you can change instruments halfway through so that could be really useful for you as well there are other things you can do look out there on YouTube there's, there's lots of expression map videos around so do have a look Well, tapped by the microphone. Uh. <laughs> Hello, this is Darren at Moon Hair Studios. Um, today I'm going to be looking.